Welcome to another edition of Childhood Maori, a show where we celebrate diversity the Canadian way. It is that time of the year when all of us are getting ready to have a great celebration, Christmas. From all of us here at Childhood Maori, we want to wish you and your family a very Merry Christmas. We have a fantastic show in store for you. Stay with us. For many of us, Christmas truly is the most wonderful time of the year. We all look forward to celebrating this great holiday with our friends and family each year. What is the significance of this great celebration? We are honored to have Pastor Dani Prasad with us. He will share with us the importance of Christmas. Please join me in welcoming him to the show. Thank you so much for being here. Well, thank you so much, Molly, for having me. I'm excited and it's a privilege to be on, on the show with you today. Thank you. So share with us what should we be focusing on as a real meaning of Christmas? Yeah, that's a great question. And you know, for me and maybe many others, Christmas is my favorite time of the year. Mm -hmm. And I know a Mine lot of people. Mine too. Oh, so there you go, right? So a lot of us really enjoy um, spending quality time with family, with friends, um, giving gifts, maybe receiving gifts. Mm -hmm. And all those things are a beautiful part of, of Christmas. And it's great, you know, so some of us feel that way. But, you know, th there's a deeper meaning to Christmas. Mm -hmm. And as much as it's an exciting time, mm -hmm. it can also be a sad time for some people. You know, maybe COVID has taken a, a toll and maybe some of us are alone. So it's important that we do reach out. But there is a deeper significance to Christmas. And it's not just about the giving of presents and the coming together as families. It really marks one of the greatest events or the greatest event uh, the of, world all time. of all time, mm -hmm. the birth of Christ. Mm -hmm. The greatest gift, actually, if I could say that. It is, yes, it is really about uh, Christ who is a gift and a gift to the world. And why is Jesus a gift to the world? Yeah, because he really is. The name Jesus means Jehovah is salvation. Mm -hmm. He saves. Salvation just means deliverance. Mm -hmm. And Christ came into this world um, to provide you know, deliverance for us, to set us free. Matter of fact, maybe I'll explain it this way because we sometimes use this word incarnation, mm -hmm. the incarnation of Christ. It is really God taking on the okay, form of flesh. Okay, so for the benefit of my viewers who yeah. may not be familiar yeah. with this term, let's explain to them in a way that they can really understand. What does incarnation mean? Sure. It really means just becoming flesh. And, and let me explain it this mm -hmm. way. If I wanted to teach my son how to drive a car, mm -hmm. I could stand outside of the car and give him instructions on how to drive and what to do and how to position his, his, his hands and how to you step on the brake. And that would be okay, but really, you know, that's not really going to do it. Mm -hmm. I have to get inside the car, mm -hmm. sit with him, and be able to navigate and show him what to do. Mm -hmm. The incarnation really is, 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 is you know, Christ stepping in in car nation mm. like I, how i had to step into the car right. to show my son how to drive what god did was really step into this world why was it necessary why could god not have done what he needed to do which was to save us from our sins why could he have not saved us by being in heaven well, that's a great question he needed to step into this world to become the perfect sacrifice for us. Mm -hmm. He showed us how to love, but he stepped in to make a way for us to live, not just here on earth, but for et all eternity. Mm -hmm. So he had to come and be a sacrifice for us. So and why was this sacrifice necessary? It was necessary because, you know what, it, we have to go right back to the garden with Adam and Eve. Okay. And they sinned and disobeyed God's law. Mm. And God, and so the wages of sin is death. There's mm. a penalty for this. Mm. So Jesus came to pay that penalty. So we don't have to, to mm. pay that penalty. He became the perfect lamb, a sacrifice for us. So now we can choose. He's paid the cost of this free gift, uh, eternal life, that we can actually choose him and accept that gift. Uh, gifts are great. And when you get a gift, I, I think most of us, we don't refuse it. We accept it. Mm -hmm. So he did something for us that was absolutely incredible. He had to come to satisfy the holiness of God and become a perfect sacrifice. 
Yes. And I think that's that's the crux of this, right? Because sin is a serious problem. Yes. Because a lot of people think like big deal. They disobey, you know, yeah. people disobey all the time. Like was what and they do worse things than that. Yes. So why disobedience is such a big deal, right? Come in comparison to human beings, maybe it's not a big deal. Right when we compare these things to the holiness of God, yes. it really is a big deal. Absolutely, right? and God is so holy, and so there, there is a requirement for us to the wages of sin is death. Mm -hmm. So what Jesus came to do, He is our salvation, mm -hmm. right? Salvation, as I said, means deliverance in a practical sense, but in a spiritual sense, it is deliverance from the penalty and the power of sin. Mm. It's 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 really incredible because. When Jesus was born, mm -hmm. a few day, a few weeks later, Simeon met him in the temple. Simeon right. was really believed to be likely a priest in the temple, mm -hmm. and Simeon lifted up that baby Jesus. Lifted up baby Jesus, said, "My eyes have behold your salvation." Mm -hmm. Right now, God made him a promise that he would live to see the Messiah, mm -hmm. and in that moment, he lifted up the baby Jesus, and he declared this was his salvation. Salvation isn't just a thing. Salvation is a person. Mm. And we have salvation that gives through what Jesus Christ did for us. Right. And we also know from the, from the Bible that without the, remission, uh, without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sins. Absolutely. We can't just say, forgive me, and it is forgiven. Yes, right now it is possible because the price has already been paid. Yes. Because the blood has already been <laughs> shed. Absolutely. Right? That's why we can say, I'm sorry, Lord, forgive me. And he does because we don't have to shed blood no anymore, right? Yeah, absolutely. And it's, it's, it's great because in the Old Testament, they had a temporary system of animal sacrifice. Mm -hmm. to, you shed the blood of a, a, a lamb mm -hmm. for the remission of the sin. But Jesus became the perfect sacrifice. And when he came, he came into the earth to become that sacrifice and when he shed his blood it was done once and for all when mm. he said it is finished on the cross his work was was finished completely his work was finished perfectly and he became the perfect sacrifice right uh, for you for me for everybody mm. for everyone <laughs> that includes you too Absolutely. if you if you're looking for forgiveness of sins right uh, because all of us are sinners and nobody needs to tell us we are because we already know we are. And people can be good people. They can do good things. And that's a good thing to do good things. But good things cannot buy or our salvation. They cannot satisfy the wrath of God. Yes. The only thing that satisfies his wrath is the blood of Jesus. Absolutely. That blood is powerful. Mm. And, you know, sometimes we think of, of blood as, as gory, but mm -hmm. really it was necessary mm -hmm. um, for, to shed blood and to make a way. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Mm -hmm. He stepped in, the incarnation. Mm -hmm. He stepped into this world to show us how to live, but to make a way for us to live, not just here and now, but for all eternity through his shed blood on the cross. Right. And that is what makes this event the most important event of all time, right? And so let's talk a little bit about uh, him coming back. There are great expectations and celebrations going on uh, all over the world with this expectation of his return. Yes. Right? And so let's talk a little bit about that because he came 2,000 years ago and now he's expected to return. And what is this expectation? How will this return be different from the one he came the first time. Tell us a little bit more about that. Yeah, absolutely. He, he is coming again, and he's coming to rapture the church, to take mm. those who believe in him, who really have accepted the gift of salvation, have chosen him. Mm -hmm. the, you know, God gives us the ability to choose, and he wants mm. us to have relationship with him and choose that. Mm. So he will come again, and he will rapture the church and take us out of, of this, this earth, all right, the earth, you know, this world is not our home. This world is not right? our home. Yeah. We're just passing through. And really to take us to be with him eternally, God wants eternal fellowship with every single one of us. Each mm -hmm. of us is so important mm -hmm. um, to him. Every single one of you listening to us right now, mm -hmm. doesn't matter what you've been through, it doesn't matter how you feel, 
doesn't it matter how people make, sometimes may make you feel less. Jesus loved you so much. He gave his life just for you, for Molly, for me, for all of us. Mm -hmm. That makes us very, very special to God. He, his, you know, he does not desire, the Bible said, for any of us to perish mm -hmm. or to miss this. And so, yes, he's coming back again. But so we have to be ready. Mm -hmm. we, have to, we have to choose that free gift. Uh, we're so caught up with giving gifts. But we need to receive the greatest gift. Uh, that comes through Jesus in salvation. Right, because you see, this time he's not coming back as a little babe in the manger. Right. right, he's coming back as the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. He's coming to rule, reign, and judge. Yes. Right, and so that's what, 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 why it is so important for us to know about it and be ready and prepared for it. And when we say church, church doesn't mean a building. Right? Yeah, Church right. means a group of people who believe, and anyone can believe. It doesn't matter what faith you come from, it doesn't matter what religion you're part of, it's totally irrelevant because Jesus never came to start a religion. He came to start a relationship. Yeah, and absolutely. And you know, when Jesus was born, and we're talking about Christmas and the significance, it was the birth announcement announcement was incredible. Mm -hmm. uh, the birth announcement was first given to the shepherds. Mm. And it says, unto you this day, the, you know, these humble, lowly men is born in the city of David, a Savior, Christ the Lord. Mm. And this is for all people. So that birth announcement was given to shepherds who were just maybe marginalized and looked down upon. But on the other hand, the birth announcement was also given to wise men. Mm. Now the well, wise kings. men... Exactly right. Wise men, if you trace the history, mm -hmm. they go all the way back to Babylon. They were called magi. They were men of great influence. They were actually known as kingmakers. They were so powerful that you could not become a king in Persia without their approval. Mm -hmm. So look at this. So the birth announcement was given to lowly men, just ordinary shepherds, men of great stature, and they came to, to present gifts to show who was the true king of kings. Mm -hmm. But the birth announcements were also given to Simeon, mm -hmm. one person. Simeon was so important to God that God said, you are not going to die until you see because my Because it was important to Simeon. It was important. But it shows you that the, the lowest to the highest to every individual, mm -hmm. uh, God wants you to know that his son died for you his son died for me. You are so important mm. that this gift is for you. And you know, all we have to do is receive it. Absolutely. So you've written a book and it's called The Journey. May I share this yes, with the viewers? Yes. Okay, so this is the book that you have written about a journey, uh, different journeys of different people. So why don't you share a little bit about this with us? Yeah, sure. So the book Journey is really, uh, it chronicles the journey of different characters surrounding the birth of Christ. Mm -hmm. uh, Joseph was on a journey, mm -hmm. Mary was on a journey, the shepherds, the wise men, Simeon, Anna, uh, Herod, the Christ child. And it really relates, you know, every journey, uh, every encounter results in a journey. And every journey is the result of an encounter. Mm -hmm. And when you have an encounter with Christ, when you have an encounter with Jesus, it's, it changes the course of your life mm. and sets you on a journey to really discover who you are, discover why you're here, discover what it is that God wants you to do while you're here, your assignment. And each of these, so we, we get into the journey and the significance of each of the different characters. Wonderful. And if you would like to get a copy of this, please click on this website listed below and you will be able to. This book, I'm told, is also available on Amazon. You can order it on Amazon. It will make a great gift uh, for your friends and family or a good read during the holidays for you. And so I guess to, uh, as you read this, you will discover uh, the journey that you've been on. And so thank you so much for being here for, each, for all of you. Uh, we want to wish you and your family a great holiday, a safe holiday, and may this Christmas be a beginning of something good and wonderful for you. Get to know Jesus during this holiday because he truly is the reason for this season. Thank you so much for being here.
wonderful, and thank you so much for having me. My pleasure.